Let's look into the outlook for major currencies, including the US dollar and the Australian dollar, ahead of the upcoming central bankers' policy meetings. And to get across all of that, Lachlan Meakin from Go Markets joins me now. Lachlan, good afternoon. Hi, Danielle. Okay, so the, we've got quite a lot of data coming out this week. Um, how are you looking at the US dollar going into the FOMC meeting next week? Because it was very weak on Friday. Yeah, I mean, the dollar index um, was down 3% in November, one of the worst months it's had for quite a while. Um, we're in the Fed blackout period. So last week we had a lot of jawboning from Fed members. It was all um, a bit wishy-washy. Some of them were talking about the rates being restricted enough. Some of them talking about, um, you know, rate cuts maybe coming next year um, and, and pushing and also pushing back against rate cuts next year. So, And Chairman Powell, I think, pretty much did both in, in the speech he did on Friday. Um, so this week will be all about the data. I think the services, PMI, uh, the first big one, and obviously non-farm payroll, which is always an exciting one. And they're, they're two um, key metrics Fed members have spoken about watching coming into next week's uh, meeting. Now, next week's meeting, obviously, there's not going to be a hike by the looks of it. But I guess what traders will be looking for is um, any kind of mucking around with their dot plots, whether they're still pricing in that one more hike uh, in this cycle or not. So uh, yeah, it'd be re really key these two these two uh, data points out this week to see if that uh, decline in the US dollar uh, continues or if we kind of bottom out, consolidate a bit at these levels. Yeah, because a few uh, traders or commentators are just saying that we've now reached a very overbought situation in the bond market, and surely if we do see a consolidation in some of those. Um, you know, Treasury yields, or if they back up a bit, that would maybe provide some support for the USD, would it not? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I completely agree. I think this um, move of, of traders trying to get in front of the Fed is a bit premature. The, the way yields have dropped, um, the way the US dollars dropped, probably gone a bit far. Um, I think we we'll probably will see a little bit of a bounce back. Um, I mean, next year, I've, I'm of the view that we'll probably see, we will see a bear rally, uh, sorry, a, a bear market in the US dollar as uh, as the Fed. You know, they're ahead of the curve hiking. I think they'll be ahead of the curve cutting next year, but um, a little bit premature at the moment, I think, with these moves. They they certainly are a bit extreme. Um, I, I expect the US dollar here to find a bit of support and and consolidate a bit. But um, yeah, well, this this data this week will be a, a big test whether that uh, coming into the FOMC next week anyway. And of course, we have the RBA meeting tomorrow, and we did see that uh, the Melbourne Institute November gauge on inflation showing uh, ongoing downward trend in inflation here in Australia. Do you think there's going to be any change of tone from the RBA, anything that could possibly either provide further support for the dollar or get it to weaken a little bit? The Aussie dollar's had a great run. I've always I've been a pretty bullish in the Aussie dollar for a while. Um, I thought it was quite undervalued down in that kind of 63 to 65 level. Um, talking about inflation, yes, we're seeing this disinflationary trend happen, but there's a lot of other figures that show that the economy is still quite robust. Um, and, and Governor Bullock was actually pretty hawkish with their comments last week. So I don't expect them to go too dovish. Um, I think they'll probably be quite similar language, but what's going to really matter is whether they leave the door slightly ajar or wide open for further hikes. We've got um, the February futures pricing in around a 25% hike out of the RBA then. So whatever they come out with with their statement, I think we'll see those um, that figure reprice and, and will certainly affect the Aussie dollar. If, if they're more hawkish than expected, leave that door wide open, as you might say. Um, certainly will give it a boost, which might get it past that resistance at 67, which is kind of just flirting around at the moment. It is just flirting around with it at the moment. <laughs> I've been noticing that. Um, gold, I was just chatting about gold. And uh, what's interesting actually, I think, is what's going on with Bitcoin, because that, if everything else is a risk on rally, Bitcoin is certainly leading that. But is there more room or upside to the gold price, Lachlan? Uh, it's all we're talking about today. It was a, a very, it was a crazy move this morning. Um, it, classic short squeeze, classic stop hunting uh, when you look at it. Um, low liquidity, obviously, on a Monday morning. So whoever wanted to push it through all those stops above the old highs obviously succeeded. But um, it's, it's, it's a bit unknown territory technically up here because obviously it's all time highs. But if we look at back at some of these other parabolic surges that gold's had in the last couple of years, there was 
a similar move in August 2020, um, I think it was March last year and, and May this year, where that RSI was in extreme overbought territory. Uh, all three times it pulled back and, and ended up going down around 10%. So whether this time is different or not, we'll see. But I agree with um, Ashley before that this is a very key level, this, this high here, around 2070. If the bulls can hold that and keep it as support, uh, certainly may see another leg up, but um, that's a big if. I, I think that an extreme move like this would probably have a bit of a pullback, but um, yeah, that, that's the level to watch, 2070.